Hey there, uh, my name is Angelo. I'm a senior developer experience engineer at Prismic, um, and I mainly work on our Next.js and JavaScript integrations. So today I'm just gonna give you a quick walkthrough of what it looks like to use Prismic with the new Next.js app router, which came out recently. And we've recently released new support for it as well. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like in practice. So to show you that, um, I have a simple, a simple demo app here. Um, it's basically just a home page with this hero slice. And scrolling down, we have this text slice. Um, and we have all the standard website things like buttons to get around the site and navigation at the top. And so this site is just uh, a really simplistic version of what you might build for your own clients. So um, I wanted to go through some of the code here so you can see what it actually looks like as a developer to use App Router. Um, this is just a regular Create Next App application. So what you see on the screen here is uh, the file structure, and it's going to look mostly like a default uh, Next app with, of course, our own um, website code in it. So most of it's going to be in the source directory. So let's open that up. And when you're using the app router, all of your pages and your API hand uh, handlers uh, are going to be in the app directory now rather than the pages directory it used to be in. So going into the app uh, directory, we have things like our pages, our CSS, our API handlers. So I'm just going to highlight some of them. So now in the app router, uh, in order to define a page, you just create a page.tsx file. That looks like this. Uh, we have our layouts. Um, layouts are a new feature that lets you define uh, like a component that goes around your page. Um, you can have one at the root of your app directory, and that's going to be your global layout. Or if you have nested routes, you can have individual layouts that just nest that sub part of your application. Uh, for most websites, you're probably just going to have one root layout. Uh, we also have assets in here. So we have our global CSS and we have our favorite con in here. And so there are other uh, conventions you can use in here. Like if you wanted to have an open graph image, you can just make uh, an image or a file in here that generates that. Um, specifically for our CSS, we're just adding it here uh, because we import it in our layout and then it's just going to be available anywhere. But you could put other things in here like images or other components that might make sense to just have next to your pages. Um, and then route handlers, we have uh, two in here, which we're going to look at more in depth a little bit later, but um, kind of like how you can define a page with page.tsx, you can define a route handler with route.ts, and that just becomes an API endpoint that you can use in your app. Uh, okay, so a big feature of Next.js is, um, or rather a big feature of the app router is how you fetch data. Um, in our case, it's going to be how we fetch data from Prismic. So it does look a little bit different than in the pages router. And for the most part, it's actually just a lot simpler. So a big win here. Um, most of your data um, fetching is going to be through the fetch function, as in the, um, the function you use to make any kind of network, network request in the browser. So that works within Next.js as well, just natively. Uh, but the Next.js app router has something built on top of that that allows you to cache all of your network requests. Uh, and we use that heavily with Prismic because we want to make sure your websites are performant um, and you know easily managed uh, as you're building it. So let's actually look into our Prismic client that you would have typically within your, um, your own website. So we recommend that you have a create client function in a Prismic io.ts or JS file. And within that, you're just calling prismic.createClient. Usually you'll have this enable auto previews function below it, and then you just return it. And within your pages, you would just call create client and use that client to go ahead and query your Prismic repository. So when you're using the fetch function with Next.js, which the Prismic client uses under the hood, you're able to configure how it caches data. That's gonna be a very important thing to manage while you're using the app router. Um, in the latest update of Prismic client, you can now pass this fetch options object, which lets you control how the fetch function is cached. So we, we recommend these settings um, for just about every case. Um, on this cache option line, you can see that in production, meaning when you deploy it to your, um, your host, like for cell, for example, we recommend uh, always using the cache, which you can do by setting uh, force cache. Uh, any other time, uh, including development while you're working on your website, 
uh, we recommend not caching anything. And that's usually what you want. Um, like for example, if you're um, editing content in your in your Prismic repository and you want to see it in your development server really quickly, this lets you just refresh the page and it'll automatically fetch that new uh, new content that you published. Uh, right below that is this next option. So these are Next.js specific fetch options. Uh, we recommend adding um, a tag, which is again, a Next.js specific feature. And you can just tag every network request with Prismic. And this is gonna let us clear the cache selectively. So you can manage your cache for all of your other um, API requests separately from Prismic. And when you publish new content, we can clear just the Prismic requests. Um, and we'll, I'll show you how that looks um, within the code and a quick demo a little bit later. Okay, let's look at it. Uh, let's look at a page and you can see what create client actually looks like when you use it. So I'm going to go back up into the app directory. And let's just look at the home page, which is page.tsx. Uh, and let me just bring this up side by side with the website. So again, this is our home page. Uh, it's fairly simple. It's really just um, a layout with a slice zone. And that's just rendering a hero slice and a text slice. And on the right is what the, that page actually looks like in the code. So at the bottom, we have our component. So we're just creating a Prismic client, we're querying for that home page, and then rendering it with the slice zone. And so most pages in Prismic can look that simple. Uh, right above it, we have this generate metadata function. This is a function uh, specific to app router that lets you define metadata for the page. So things like the title or um, uh, like the description for the page. You could also have uh, different like icons or any kind of metadata you want to associate with it. Um, if you're using TypeScript, you can just use autocomplete and you'll get basically every, um, every option available. Okay, if we go one level up, we can look at the layout. And this is what, this is the layout that's going to be wrapping all of our pages. So this is our root layout. Uh, and you can see it looks just like a normal React component, just like the page. The only difference being that we have a uh, children prop. And so the children is uh, is the contents of your page. So in our case, we just have a header that goes above the children and a footer. Uh, there is a Prismic preview here, which we'll get, get back to. Um, I do want to highlight that this is just a standard React component, and we are calling just uh, this header component we have in the file. But because this is a server component, we're actually able to do data fetching right within the component itself without having to do any complicated use effects or like a, a React query hook. Instead, we just create a client, query for our settings document, and then we can use that data anywhere we want in that component, just like we did in our page. So the mental model is a lot simpler when, you, um, when you're thinking about how to fetch data. You just kind of do it as you might do it in any other JavaScript project. Okay, next, um, let's look at the slices. So when we have when we called slice zone in our page, uh, we passed it an object of components. So if you look at the definition of that, we have our hero and our text uh, components in this map. Um, this code is generated by slice machine, so typically you don't touch this, but you will be touching the component codes. So within our slices folder, uh, we're going to go into hero and then index.tsx, which is your hero uh, component. So this is just a standard React component, just like everything else we've looked at so far, but it is using some Prismic specific components like our, um, uh, we have like Prismic rich text, Prismic next image, uh, and Prismic next link. So Prismic next link is actually the, a new component you can use um, as of just a couple of weeks ago. And that replaces Prismic link from the React component whenever you're working on a Next.js project. It's basically a, a really simple way to use next link uh, without having to understand how it works, and you can just pass it a Prismic link field instead. So we have an example of that uh, right here. So you just pass your field and everything else is taken care of for you. Um, this hero slice component is a server component, um, as all components are uh, by default within the app router. Things like um, Prismic rich text and other components from our Prismic packages, they are also all server components by default, unless we have to upgrade them to a client component um, out of necessity. So for the most part, we try to optimize it for performance um, so that you don't have to think about having to optimize your, your work. Next, we're going to look at preview support within the app router. 
So preview support is currently experimental. Um, you are able to use it in your Next.js app today within the app router, but um, just know that some APIs might change. I'm going to give you a demo of it really quickly to show you what it looks like, and then I'll show you how we've implemented it and how you would use it in your app. So if we open up uh, the writing room for your, uh, for your repository, and let's say uh, we're going to edit something on the about page. Uh, so we have our hero slice. Actually, let me open it up side by side so we can see. Uh, so yeah, so we have our hero slice at the very top. Uh, right below that, we have a text slice, which we can see on the left side in Prismic. And we're just going to make a change to the heading here. So let's say hello, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I could publish it, and that'll go live to everyone. Or I can click on the I to preview it before I actually do that. Uh, so I'm going to preview it in our development build. So I'll put that side by side here. And so there it is. Uh, we can tell we're in a preview because we have the Prismic toolbar showing up in the bottom left corner. Uh, and of course, we have our changes here that we can we can see. Um, I can do this um, as many times as I need. So I can do another edit in the header or in the heading. And then I can just save the document. And then on the right side, it'll just go ahead and refresh uh, as soon as it catches that change. And there it is. So you can probably imagine as an editor, this is a really important feature to have. Uh, and of course, it's not something you really want to leave out. So we do have it uh, available in the app router now. Uh, when you're done, you can just go ahead and click on the X and that'll reset everything back to the published version. I'm going to bring it back to the original uh, placeholder text and then publish that. Okay, so as far as actually implementing this in your Next.js app, let's look at the code again. So there are three uh, files that you have to edit to make this work. So the first is going to be your global layout. Uh, this is where you'll need to put this uh, Prismic preview component. If you're, if you're already using the pages uh, router, you're already familiar with the Prismic preview component. Uh, it's going to be the same one that you just add to your root layout instead now. Also, uh, in your Prismic io.ts file, uh, you're going to need that enable auto previews function. Um, again, it's the same one that you would use in the pre in the uh, pages router. Uh, and then lastly, you'll need a route handler to redirect people from the Prismic writing room that we have on the left to the page that you want to preview on the right. And so that we're just going to add a previews route handler. And in that, you just have to create a client and then redirect to preview URL. So a very simple thing. Um, again, it's just to redirect people. Um, and that's it. So there aren't, aren't any changes you have to make to your pages. Uh, when you create your client and then query for your content, it'll automatically, automatically detect that you're in a preview session and grab that preview um, content instead. And that Prismic preview component is what lets it automatically refresh and check for updates to your, um, to your draft. Um, so the only caveat that I have to point out here is, um, like I said, it is experimental. The, uh, the main drawback of the solution currently is that your, um, your website has to be uh, dynamically rendered, meaning you're not able to pre-render all of your pages at build time. So the only uh, difference in experience that your, your visitors will see is that the initial page load does take a little bit longer. Um, the reason being your server has to actually um, render all of your React components every time it's requested. And so you will see about a two to three times uh, slowdown, which does sound like a lot. And you know, we'll be honest, it is significant. That's the difference between like 100 milliseconds in a static site to like two or 300 milliseconds um, at the very beginning. So that is something to be aware of. But every page after that, as you're clicking through your site, um, it's still going to feel immediate. Um, we did want to release this experimental version because uh, people do want to build with the app router and we want to make sure that previews are part of that. So you do have the option to use it at least. Um, if this is a mission critical site, um, and you need previews, um, you may want to consider sticking to the pages router for now or not supporting previews until we have a um, more non-experimental version of it. Um, and so you're just so you're aware, we are talking with the Next.js team to, to figure out how can we get uh, static working with uh, previews. So hopefully that is coming in the future. Okay, so that is previews. The very last piece I wanted to point out was on-demand revalidation. Um, 
to explain that, we'll have to go back to our uh, create client function. And we're going to look at that next tags uh, option again. So I mentioned that all of our network requests are tagged with the Prismic tag, and that would let us identify Prismic requests and then clear them from the cache. And so that's exactly what on-demand revalidation does. Um, you would basically need to set up a route handler within your, your project, which we have set up as uh, just slash revalidate. And within that route, um, you just have to call this function revalidate tag. And so anytime this route gets called, it's going to clear all Prismic requests from the network cache. So we're going to make sure that this endpoint gets called anytime we publish content from Prismic. And luckily, it's really easy to do that. All you have to do is go to your settings in your repository, go to webhooks, and you would add a webhook for on-demand validation. So I've already have one in here. So if you were to edit that, you can see the settings. Um, all we're going to do is call your deployed application, uh, but then the slash revalidate. Uh, we're going to call it at the slash revalidate route. And you can see the triggers in the bottom. It's just for when a document is published or unpublished. And to see that an action is quite simple. So again, we have our about page on the right side. I'm going to bring it up in Prismic here. And um, you can imagine, actually, let's switch over to our production version. So you can see I'm looking at the Vercel.app instead. So if I refresh the page, um, like I mentioned earlier, this is a dynamic request. So all the React components are rendering every time I refresh, but the network requests are, are being cached. So we're not waiting for Prismic to respond every page load. Uh, what that means, though, is we do need to tell it to clear the cache when we make a change. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a change here. I'm just adding the word edit to the heading. I'm going to save it, and I'm going to publish it. Now, normally within a, a standard static website, as soon as we publish it, um, we would have to notify uh, Vercel, for example, to go ahead and rebuild your whole site, which could take you know, 30 seconds for a small site to several minutes or even 10 to 20 minutes for uh, much larger websites. But with on-demand revalidation, it's basically instant. So we're going to see that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and publish it. And on the right side, I'm just going to refresh immediately. And there's our edit. So there's no need to wait for your whole website to rebuild, which, as I mentioned, like even in the smallest of websites, could be at least 30 seconds. And now it's basically less than one second. And that is it. That was a quick tour of App Router with Prismic. Um, if you do want to get more information about this in written form, um, our documentation is updated to uh, cover App Router. Um, if we look at this document, for example, in Fetch Data, you'll be able to see what our recommendations are for the Pages directory or the App Router. And as you scroll through it, you'll see versions for both of them. So we do default to the App Router, which is what we recommend all new websites be built with. But if you are still working, if you are working in the Pages directory, you can switch over to that and see the equivalent version. Uh, we are still working on updating some of our documents. So like Defined Paths, for example, is currently only for the Pages router. Um, but we, we do have, uh, but we are working on upgrading them to be uh, compatible with both the app router and the Pages router. So check back if you, um, if you need to find information on that. Lastly, the, the demo that I just showed you, it is hosted online. Um, you can go to uh, the Prismic IO community GitHub repository and you can check out all of the code that I just showed you. Um, and it is deployed. So if you want to check out the actual website and click around, um, that's available as well. And we'll, we'll share the link with you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments um, or jump into the Prismic community forum and just go ahead and post your question there and uh, someone will get back to you. Maybe it'll be me. All right, thanks.